dear students, have you seen long trees? Have you ever thought how water reaches the top of trees? Yes, is it not fascinating that plants do not have a organized circulatory system, but yet the water reaches the top of trees. Plants also need to transport water to long distances. So, today we are going to discuss the chapter transport of water and minerals in plants. So, let us understand some of the transport processes that take place in plants. The chapter transport in plants, the topic that we will be discussing is the means of transport. The focus points would be diffusion, facilitated diffusion, uniport, symport and antiport and active transport. Before we start our concept, let us ask some basic questions. What substances are transported? What kind of movement? And what is the direction of transport? The substances transported are water, mineral nutrients, organic nutrients and plant growth regulators. Movement they are based on the distances which are classified into short distances and long distances. Let us first see the short distances. The first type of the short distances are diffusion and the second one is the cytoplasmic streaming. In the long distances through which take place through the vascular system xylem and phloem and this is called translocation. In the direction of movement we have a two types unidirectional that is from roots to stem. Second we have multidirectional in which the organic and the mineral nutrients are transported from leaves to the other parts and storage organs. Let us see now the transport in the plants, the various ways by which we, the water is transported in the plants. There are two important processes, passive and active. Passive, the two types of the passive transport that is simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion and the second one is the active diffusion. We will individually we are going to see how the passive transport and the active transport takes place. Let us first study our simple diffusion. In the simple diffusion the key features are number one the slow process, there is a random movement of molecules no expenditure of energy and the water moves from a region of high concentration to region of low concentration. Now this can be explained with the help of a very known demonstration. We take two beakers, in one of the beaker we put potassium permanganate in water and then we see the diffusion in which the potassium permanganate crystals molecules, they diffuses into the water molecules. There is no expenditure of energy and yet the molecules spread into the water molecules. Now let us see what is the importance of diffusion in plants. Number one, it is the only means of gaseous movement within the plant body. Second, it keeps the cell walls of internal plant tissues moist through absorption and distribution of water and third absorption of ions during passive salt uptake. Now the second one is the facilitated diffusion as the term indicates that it is facilitated that means this it is held the diffusion is held by number one it is a spatial transmembrane carrier proteins which help without expenditure of energy. Second, it is very specific that means it allows only certain molecule to pass through and again it is down the concentration gradient that means from a region of low concentration to the region of higher concentration. Now the diagrams clearly shows that how the molecules are 
taken by the carrier proteins and the carrier proteins they help in the diffusion of the molecules from outside to the inside of the cell. These carrier molecules they are embedded in the plasma membrane. There are certain protein transporters which are present in the plasma membrane and this diagram clearly shows the first diagram where the particular molecules they bind to the spatial proteins carrier in the plasma membrane and then in the next you can see the process in which the molecules are helped by a carrier proteins which are present in the plasma membrane and then then the third process the molecules are taken inside the cell. So, the protein carries transport only certain molecule across the membrane, but will take them in either direction down the concentration gradient. Now, let us talk about porins. Now, what is porins? Now, porins they are the large transporter protein which create huge pores in the outer membrane of plastids, mitochondria and bacteria. Now, in the type of porins, we have aquaporins. Now, these aquaporins, as the name indicates, that it allow passage of water molecules surrounded by eight proteins. Now, this is a picture that clearly shows that how the water channel is created by aquaporins. Now, let us come to the types of facilitated diffusion. The first type is the uniport the movement of particles of solute across the membrane which is independent of particles of other solutes. That means that the molecules are only of one type. The second one is the same port when both molecules they cross membrane in the same direction. That means there is a co-transport that the molecules move in the same direction. The third type is the antipode when the molecules they move in the opposite direction. Now in the diagram we see in the case of unipode one type of solute particle passes through the plasma membrane. In the case of sympode and antipode which are the two types of co-transport. In the case of sympode, the solute molecules, the two solute molecule crosses the plasma membrane in the same direction. On the other hand, in antipode, two different kind of solute molecule passes in the opposite direction. Now, in the facilitated diffusion, the picture clearly shows the difference between the simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. In the simple diffusion, no carrier molecules are involved. On the other hand, in the facilitated diffusion, the carrier molecules are involved. Now, let us come to active transport. The active transport, the key points are it uses energy, involve spatial carrier proteins, it is often against concentration gradient. So, it is an uphill reaction that is from low to high concentration and energy used in activating carrier protein which picks up solute from carrier complex. The complex break and the solute released to other surface. Now, let us see the diagram that clearly explains steps of the active transport. In the first step, the carrier proteins they have got two binding sites, the phosphate binding site and the ligand binding site the solute molecules bind to the ligand binding sites. In the second step, the clearly shows the hydrolysis of ATP to ADP and phosphate. This phosphate is used for as energy for the transport of solute molecules. In the third step, the solute molecules are entrapped in the carrier proteins and lastly in the fourth step, with the help of energy, the solute molecule is released into the other side of the cell. Now, let us compare passive and the active transport. Now, as clearly shown in the diagram, in the passive transport, the diffusion, no carrier molecules, facilitated diffusion where you can see the carrier proteins and in the active transport, you can see the carrier plus ATP involved. 
Now let us come see the summary. Summary that summarizes the differences between the simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion and active transport. So let us summarize. Simple diffusion down the concentration gradient, facilitative also down the concentration gradient. On the other hand, active transport is against concentration gradient. Second, in simple diffusion, no spatial carrier molecules, facilitative diffusion, spatial transport proteins are involved and in active transport, spatial carrier proteins are involved. In case of simple diffusion, not sensitive to inhibitors, in facilitative diffusion, since there is a presence of proteins, so the transport proteins are sensitive and in active transport again due to the presence of carrier proteins, it is sensitive. A very important difference, simple diffusion, no energy, facilitative diffusion, no energy. On the other hand, in active transport, energy in the form of ATP is required. And Last, not least, in the simple diffusion, it is not selective, facilitative diffusion is highly selective and in the case of active transport is highly selective. So dear students, let us have a simple quiz and try to answer the following questions. The first question is, what substances are transported by plants? Second, name the two ways of short distance transport in plants. Third, what is translocation? Fourth, what is simple diffusion different from facilitated diffusion and differentiate between symport and antipode? And the last question, which kind of transport require energy and why? Thank you. Mm -hmm.